100 games, Charlie, well done. Did you ever think you'd make it? Well, when you first come in, you always think, oh, gee, you're going to make it easy as, and then you, you realise how hard playing AFL is. Setbacks, probably a few times. So I probably didn't think I was going to make 100 games. I'll keep playing at some one point there with injuries, as you like to tell me. <laughs> well, what is it? How many years now? Eight? Is eight this years. Eight here? Yeah. Do you have time it's like you always look at your games played as you go on, yeah. and you you probably get a bit disappointed when you see other players getting more, but then in a way it definitely makes you take them in a bit more when you get them and being injured. And, but nah, it's been a ride. I probably wouldn't, everyone says I wouldn't change it the way it is, but I definitely would change it. We'd rather not get injured. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. Um, oh. But nah, it's been, a, yeah, it's been a journey. Yeah, but I reckon like I would have had so much doubt about if I played like you, which I don't, but I've, about doubt about being able to play the same way coming off like broken uh, patellas and you know almost having barbed wire wrapped around your kneecap to put it back together again yeah. and to be able to crash packs and kick bags of goals and play the way you do and get to 100. Did you have much doubt? Yeah I had a fair bit of doubt coming back there for sure. The, I don't know it was that first like patch of coming back to play Always like train, like training, you get a lot of confidence out of it, but you never really know. Forward's such an up and down game where you, you're based on what other people are doing. Um, but yeah, launching into packs, like that was the hardest part, and, and jumping. Fear of getting injured again was definitely huge um, for a long time there. But yeah, being played with freedom and, and stuff, and that's where I play my best footy is when I'm free and not overthinking it. So looking back, that period was pretty, was pretty tough. I mean, yeah, backing yourself in coming back to play is the hardest thing. And, yeah, watching other people perform um, when you're injured is, uh, is probably is pretty hard and you want to be improving as a player but you feel like your career's halted for two years so you, you feel like you don't improve. Um, I felt like the time at the club and when, I'm, when I was there I trained hard um, and I was able to relax when I got away from the club and that's due to great family <laughs> like yours, Emily and the kids, you know, Charlotte, Reese, their kids, George, Eliza. You know, mum and dad, like I was probably spending countless hours at mum and dad's in that time, sitting around the fire. But yeah, but nah, mum, mum and dad, like, yeah. they pulled, you know, probably, you know, helped me out in that period where I was, things weren't working well and needed to change and had heaps of fractures reoccurring in my knee just from small movements that would occur. And obviously during COVID it was a tough time because you couldn't really talk to a lot of people. And yeah, mum focused on, you know, mum and dad kind of, you know, and, and my managers, Paul and Robbie, probably really kick things off and start getting things moving in the right direction, so I owe them a lot, really. Um, yeah, yeah I was able to go see a fracture specialist who just seen my, looked at my knee a whole different way to um, where it was before, and yeah, it was, it's nice, because I caught up with Ryan Pappenhausen the other day, and he's gone through the same knee injury, um, you know, and he, it's just like a different injury that no one's really had, so it was nice, you know. And he's having a lot of, you know, his struggles, and he's getting through it now. And so you can um, share, so your, you could share, you yeah. could share your, your thoughts and views on it when you know, others people just don't understand it. So he would love that. Um, yeah. So I, you know, and I got so much from that talking to him too. So yeah, being able to discuss that and that kind of reflect made me reflect upon it and to where I am to playing 100 games and yeah, a lot of that goes to you know, mum, dad, Robbie, and, and Paul. Yeah, um, that was. It's a pretty big deal. What about, do you want to talk about your relationship with your siblings? And because I know, uh, you know, you're one of five, of which I'm one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, it can on. be frosty at times, but I feel like yeah, when, yeah. It, when it gets down <laughs> to it, we are there to support yeah. each other. But nah, um, yeah, well, growing up, well, you know what it was like. We used to. I know, play. so I wanted you to tell people because you're Spend, crazy. <laughs> probably lead us back to mum and dad when we're back at home, you know. It was great because I was the fifth child, so by the time it got to me, so you got away got with a, everything. I was, to, you know, <laughs> I was allowed to ride home from school, which was you know in the heart of Torquay, and we were outside of Torquay, and you know you probably weren't allowed to do that, and you used to ask. By the time I was allowed to probably negotiate with mum and dad a bit more and push the boundaries, um, they were sick of making you guys. You know, we, we never had playstations. We never had you know, we never really got home. We chucked, never really chucked on TV. Mum locked us outside. Yeah, she locked us outside. She had that bell she would ring when dinner would be on. And so you'd get home from school and that would be your, your, your play time. And, um, you know, we spent countless hours, well, like, playing sport with you. 
Yeah. But I guess all that kind of stuff adds up as you as you grow up, doesn't it? Mate? Yeah. I know. By the time I was in year nine or year ten, you guys had all gone. So. Um, what about your style of play at school? <laughs> What was that like in the school teams? Well, I was going to say, you, whenever you'd come back, I'd always want to play with you, and you hated me. You just said I was an annoying little kid, and you'd take me out and we'd play cricket, and you know, you'd bat the whole time. I'd finally get you out after an hour of bowling. You can't bowl. <laughs> I'd go like in, you. I'd go in, bat for two balls, get out, and then you'd be back in. It was just brutal. There wasn't much competition. What you've about done, you? Did well. Stay playing. Actually, it would have been quite boring for you. No, it was good when I was batting. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it would have been. What about flogging me? What about at school? Like with your what with your sport at school? Like how'd your footy yeah, go so at I school and how'd you running? Was a year younger, and I reckon that helped me heaps. So I was always a year younger. So I was always like smaller, hit puberty late. So I always played small, um, and then maybe year nine and ten, probably small and a bit chubby. <laughs> <laughs> um, Running around with you guys, you guys put such a high importance on athletics. I always wanted to do what my older siblings did, and mum would come pick me up at school um, on those Friday other games. You have a footy, yeah, and I'd get to come watch you, and you're like, oh, "Wow, how good is this?" You, you'd think first footy was the, oh school footy, school yeah, footy. and yeah. you were like, "How good is this?" Yeah. So at that age, I was kind of like, "That's all I really wanted to do," and I was probably you know better footy footballer player at that age, and I was going to do country tryouts and stuff, and then. I probably dropped off. You were always a good footy player. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, Just year 10 C coach didn't like you. Or the and, year then, 10. and then, I, um, you know, things happened for me a bit later and a bit, I used to love to come watch you play and that's how I've always wanted to play football. Yeah. And, you know, you had that, that school footy team was, yeah, it was, was awesome to watch. Yeah. yeah. You guys would dominate. Um, yeah. It was good. And that's probably where I first started to, to start loving. Loving footy, and me and George would come watch, and, and Eliza. And then you got drafted rookie to Adelaide. Um, and when you got, you know, that was awesome for our family. I remember how pumped everyone was because it meant so much to you. Yeah. Um, and you probably missed out on the draft. Yeah. You know, a bit disappointed in that. And then to get rookie to Adelaide and get your opportunity. Um, yeah. Even though things didn't go there, but that was that was a big thing for our family and and for us um, siblings underneath you. Yeah, it was good. But then also like the drafts, your draft year, and you had a pretty solid year and it looked like you were going to go high, but I don't think a lot of other clubs maybe rated you as high as Wieners, obviously. <laughs> I'd pick Wieners. <laughs> then we picked you up, uh, what, two picks after Harry? Yeah. It's probably about well. right, talent-wise. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> Leave it to uh. others. <laughs> uh, Paul and Robbie kind of pulled me over. They were like, yeah, we, you know, this way it could go. And they literally picked every pick from 1 to 12 exactly how it went, you know, 30 minutes before it. So, you know, when they told me, I didn't believe them because I was like, oh, you know, it's something, you, know, you just you didn't think it's going to actually happen. And after a pretty big week, a bit, you know, a massive relief. And yeah. you kind of didn't think, you know, I guess you used to come to your place and you'd always come in and, you know, you'd have. In those year, earlier years, before the draft, you would always, you know, see Eddie Betts, Mitch Robinson, and all these guys, Jared Wade, and they would get around you. And then big Rob Warnock was on the table getting his ass needled. You know, I just remember, I just remember all these funny, weird things and situations. You know, going to the club and you, you know, that's what a footy club's like. And I remember thinking that, you know, it'd be how good would it be to be an AFL player, and how good would it be an AFL player and go to the same club as your brother? And yeah, no, it was good because. What you bring to the club helps my football and makes me a better player and a better person. And I'd like to think I can do that for you as well, but all sincere, sincerely, like when you got to the club, I feel like before that I was on the edge with form a bit. I was, was in and out of the side a little bit. And what you did was give me the confidence to free myself up and it, you know, you know, it made me believe that I could be a better player than what I was, and that's what you do, Charlie, because you play so freely um, with your style, and you have a crack, and you go for it, and you play with joy. So you bring that out in others, and that's your strength, and that helped me a lot. Thanks, mate. That's really nice. And we've got to enjoy that for like the last eight years. It's been good. No, My little regret, like I don't really have regrets, was like Charlie was injured a lot for like our time in eight years together and, and we have a fair age gap so there's a time limit we can play together and so we missed out on that footy because you, like and they were shocking the injuries that you had and then finally when you got yourself up and going and flying and winning a Coleman I couldn't get on the park and um, 
yourself. And that was that hurt because I just wanted to play more footy with you. And part of my drive for playing this year was just yeah. to be on the ground with you because yeah. really, like, that's all, that was my biggest driver. And then to bring, be able to bring my family down and for the kids to share it with me, their dad yeah. and their uncle and the rest of the family is unreal. So, yeah, I've been able to connect a couple of times in the four line and yeah. have our stupid embraces and high fives or whatever it is we try and do to celebrate each other's uh, performance, which we can't do very well, but that was awesome. Like, oh, that's that probably was, one of my that best was memories. Yeah. As a junior, um, you know, you, at times you can be really harsh on me, but I think you knew uh, maybe I needed it. I probably did need it, but, um, but also very warming without being warming. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not, you know, you're not an affectionate person, you know, but you do it in other ways. You, you know, we'll have conversations with people, you know, without me knowing, or you know, or make sure I'm um, heading in the right direction. You'd always pick me, you know. If I was doing something wrong, I probably when I probably was, or you'd probably you'd put me on the straight, straight path, and um, you helped me out with my footy because the same enjoyment factors. You know, growing up, I got so much enjoyment out of watching you play footy, um, and I probably emotionally got attached to your footy. You know, when you, um, you know, I'd go to school and tell everyone. You know, I'd show, I took um, your Adelaide photo, team photo, <laughs> to show and tell at school, and that's cool. Um, you know, these all little things along the way that you know I enjoyed doing and telling people that you won the Liston Trophy off 13 games or came second that year in the yeah. BFL and you're going to get picked up that year. You got picked up by Carlton, um, you know, and then yeah, like I was saying before, going to watch you play first footy. That's where I, you know, enjoyed my love, you know, of playing first footy. And when you come home and have a of footy with me, <laughs> if it wasn't annoying you too much, you know. Kick out in the back paddock. Um, always thought your kick was awesome, mate. Don't tell them. Don't let them get. I did. Um, we still we still got to do that a bit this preseason. Yeah, Chuck Oval was Jack good Oval, fun. Yeah, how fun was that? And you know, so many good moments. And I was talking to Walsh about one. You know, those running training sessions we did at the Bird Rock, and you know, being able to talk to you about footy every day, and um, you know, phone calls on the way back, and um, yeah. you know, it's, you're pretty, you know. Everyone looks to you and the family as a um, a bit of a soundboard at times. Um, the brick wall, George calls me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good thing. Sound, a good soundboard. You know, you don't you tell them how it is. And um, oh, the other mate. I probably haven't even. There's a lot of things to touch on with you. We, <laughs> good things, but um, your off-field work and showing, you know, us how to, you know, especially me as a young player and your brother. You know things you can do off field to better yourself, and you probably say that you know I've helped you become a better footballer a lot. But you, the stuff you do off field for the club and also for yourself to better yourself as a person, yeah, pretty good role model of helps there. And yeah, the other reason I got into footy in the first place. Apparently, we are the first Carlton brothers to get a hundred games, so we get our names on the lockers. Oh boy, boy. Yeah, I know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> Hold on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> took me a while, probably took me a bit longer than... You know. Eight years still. Pretty you would probably play with a lot of players at a club that don't get the name of the locker, but they equally had like a big influence on you. Like, I, for me, like some of my great mates over the journey, Tom Bell, Simon White, Sam Rowe, yeah. Andreas Everett, like they didn't get to have their name on a locker, but they had massive impact at the club and with me and my relation, like, yeah, you and say how I'm pretty, yeah. yeah. Like, and we are so lucky we've been able to get that longevity and as, as two brothers, um, to do that's really special.